So in this video we're going to go through combinations. Now permutations and combinations are things that you do at the same time. Permutations, as we've seen in the last video, is when order is important. So here, you will write order is important. Order important. Combinations, on the other hand, are different. When we talk about combinations, the order is unimportant. Order is unimportant. So those are two differences between permutations and combinations. Say that you have a subset or, or a set of objects, and let's say, let's say that we have, I don't know, uh, let's use letters. Let's use, let's say we have A, B, and C, and C, B, and A. Now, these are two permutations. The order is important, but they are one combination because they use the same letter, and order is unimportant. So that's the kind of differences there are concerning combinations and permutations, and that's something that you need to know in order to go through the questions that you might get for homework. Now here's the theorem for uh, for combinations, and uh, we have n being the number of distinct objects, and r being the size of the objects chosen, or for example spots. So let's say let's say that we have that we are working with letters. Well, there are 26 letters, right? And here we are only choosing three spots. So r is three, and n in case of in the case of having letters is 26. And the number of combinations of size r from a collection of size n is is uh, represented by this formula c n r equals uh, p n r, which is our permutation formula that we had way back in the last video. Uh, this formula, and we take that and divide it by um, r exclamation mark now or r factorial. Now another way to say c n r is n choose r. And really, the formula that you have to remember is actually this formula. This is the final, uh, the final formula that is derived from this formula. So this is really what you need to remember, and you really need to remember the bounds that it's set at. Now, there are two cases, or like three cases, that you should really just memorize, because really, uh, I don't think they're that important, but they might come up and I feel that it's better to memorize it than to understand if you're really just going for the mark. So for all n greater than or equal to 0, uh, n choose 0 is equal to n choose n equals 1. And for all n greater than or equal to 1, uh, cn1 equals to cn n minus 1 equals n. And for when we have 0 less than or equal to n less than r, then C N R is equal to zero. This is kind of when um it's kind of when we have, let's say we have twenty six letters, but then we have thirty spots. Well, we need to fill in those thirty spots, so and there's no way to do it. So so that's how we came up with the zero. For this formula, for this second uh second point that you have to note, uh how we could just how this works, you could just plug it into the formula and see how it works. So uh, C n n minus one, right? So we just plug it into this formula, and C n uh, n minus one is equal to n factorial uh, over r, which is uh, n minus one, because this is our r, and that's n minus one factorial times n minus n minus uh, 1 factorial. Now if we uh, distribute this equal sign into this this, uh, this equation, then we have n minus n, and these two cancel out, and this uh, this minus sign uh, times this minus sign pretty much gives us a positive. So uh, we have 1 there, so this whole thing is just equal to 1. And when we distribute uh, when we expand this factorial, you know it goes like n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 
and so on, right? Well, from n minus one all the way down to all the way down to one, that's pretty much n. That's pretty much n minus one factorial. So this whole thing will cancel out. So in the end, we'll just we'll just be left with n over one, which equals to n. So I hope you followed that uh, rather easily. And we have to finish these kind of videos with a couple of examples. And these examples are really simple. And you should really do more practice on harder examples in order to really get a hang of it. So let's say that there are 30 kids who wants to compete in a marathon for their sports festival. But only eight of the kids, uh, there are only eight spots for a competition. So order is not important here. How many ways can eight people be chosen to complete? Well, this is exactly, this, this, is, this represents the combination formula that we're talking about. And all we simply have to do is do C 30 for 30 kids, which is n distinct objects. And uh, 30R is 8. And I'm currently lagging. And R is 8. So that's the answer. It's as simple as that. It's, it's uh, 30 choose 8. 30 choose 8. And then you just plug it into the formula. And it's equal to 30 r is 8 and yeah n minus r i think what was the formula again yeah n minus r so 30 minus 8 and whatever answer you came up come up with from that formula is the answer that you get so the next example is uh for the for the olympics the coach must select nine men to swim for the country they are junior and senior swimmers if there are 20 juniors and 25 seniors and there is no importance of order, how many ways can the coach make the selection? Well, this is also a really simple example. All you have to do is you have to take, you just take 28 plus 25 and that will give you 53. So we have 53 swimmers in total. 53 swimmers in total. And the coach must select 9 men to swim for the country. So again, it's like this marathon example we just did. There's nine spots and 53 distinct objects. So the answer is simply 53 choose nine. And um, yeah, so if you just plug that into the equation, plug that equation into uh, the formula that we had earlier, then you could get the number of ways uh, we can that the coach can make the selection. But let's say if there are three juniors and uh, one senior who are really good swimmers and he must be on the team. Then how can we make the selection? Well, four spots are already taken and four distinct objects must be taken. So we take 53 minus the four and we get 49. And uh, there and we also have to minus the spots we we we, uh, we have allocated. So nine minus four, which is equal to five. Why is writing such a bitch right now? So my minus four equals five. So then the answer is simply forty nine choose five, right? And again, you can use the formula to figure out what the exact number of ways is, or you just plug it into Wolfram Alpha and get your answer. Now for the last one, if a certain round requires the team to be comprised of four juniors and five seniors. How can the coach make the selection? Well, there are there are uh, there are twenty eight juniors. So of those twenty eight juniors, four must be selected. So twenty eight choose four. And there are five. Uh, there are twenty five seniors, and five of those seniors must be selected. So twenty five choose five. So we take these two uh, numbers that we came up with, and we times them together. And that's the number of ways that you can get. Uh, then that's the number of ways to get an order for uh, the competing team. So I just want to finish with sigma notation. And this sigma notation is really easy and you have, should have learned it in high school. But if you didn't, here's a quick 101 on how to do it. So this is sigma and 
i is just something arbitrary or it's pretty much the what we call the uh, index and it counts for uh, it's, it's the letter i is just called the index of the summation so this is called the index of the summation and what we have here this m is what we call the lower limit lower limit and this uh, this this m plus n this part that's on top of the sigma is called the upper limit the letters is totally uh, arbitrarily chosen so you don't really have to you don't really have to worry about what letter it is. It could be any letter. So that's the upper limit. And uh, pretty much in this case, m and n are integers that are greater than 0. So m and n must be greater than 0. Must be greater than or equal to 0. And why is this always like beach balling? So let's just go through these three examples and then we'll call it a day. So here, the we have this kind of equation, and we really I don't really know how you how do you formally say this, but this is how you do it. So you start off with the lower limit, and you keep on adding until you get up to the upper limit. So this is pretty much equal to one squared because we're pretty much taking this uh, this i squared. It's pretty much gonna go through all. Uh, go through the numbers from the lower limit to the upper limit and uh, yeah this is pretty much how it's done two plus three squared plus four squared so yeah that's pretty much as simple as it is and then this will equal to some number that I don't really want to calculate out to but we're taking the number from the lower limit to the upper limit so that is one two three four and then we're uh, and then we're pretty much taking those numbers and we're using this formula to uh, to get these numbers and then we sum them all together and that's pretty much what the sigma notation stands for in this simple case so you could just try and do these two other examples if you want just pause the video and do it but I'm going to pause the video and and just come back with the answer just so we don't waste a lot of time so welcome back and these are the answers that I got from uh, from a lower limit of 6 and an upper limit of 8 we get uh, 3 times 6 plus 3 times 7 plus 3 times 8 and from a lower limit of 3 and an upper limit of 7 with AI, we get A3 A plus A4 plus A5 plus A6 plus A7. And that's all I want to go through today. Sigma rotation is pretty simple and combination is also pretty simple. So if you want to do well on your quiz or test or homework or whatever, then you should really practice on, uh, practice, do more, do more questions and practice on combinations and sigma notation. But other than that, please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Oh, and also don't forget to like and follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys again next time.